As the day-to-day -day struggle continues to gain freedom for a family member who has been in prison since before I was born, getting the truth to be told and raising awareness is very crucial in these times. My cousin's name is Leonard Peltier. He's a 64-year-old political prisoner and for the past 34 years he has been falsely imprisoned for the death of two FBI agents, even though in his own trial the prosecutor has admitted in court that we can't prove who shot the agents, and I quote, Whatever happened to prove beyond reasonable doubt, this principle alone is reasonable enough for him to be free. I want to get the people involved, but I stress to exercise good judgment and learn the case from all angles before they take a stand. There are movies and books about Leonard, but no sign of his plight within society's most influential music, hip-hop. So four years ago, I started a journey within hip-hop culture and has all accumulated with a recent radio, concert, and speaking tour in Los Angeles. I joined up with a friend, Chairman Fred Hampton Jr. of the Prisoners of Conscience Committee, whose father was also a victim of the exact same government agents who were illegally conducting a program called Cointel in the late 60s and 70s. Black people need some peace. White people need some peace. And we are going to have to fight. We're going to have to struggle. We're going to have to struggle relentlessly to bring about some peace because the people that we're acting for peace, they're a bunch of megalomaniac warmongers and they don't even understand what peace means. When the FBI and the Chicago police came in and in cold blood, murdered Fred Hampton Sr., you know what I'm saying, young organizer revolutionary, while he was in bed, drugged by the FBI agents through a counterintelligence program, was drugged and assassinated on December 4th, 1969. We recognize that, that war that killed Fred Hampton Sr. is still fighting against our people today, from the youngsters to the elders. We say, decolonize your mind, free all political prisoners. Today, showing our solidarity and our love to the revolutionaries out there, such as Leonard Peltier, was a part of an American Indian movement, a militant revolutionary organization, which members came together to take a stand against the treaty rights that were being neglected by the government for over 500 years, 372 treaties broken by the U.S. government and never honored to this day. And we're taking a stand for that. We're not going to let that, that struggle, that, that's a revolutionary struggle, a revolutionary act, be participating in it. And so we're going to keep that alive on this day. The same reactionary forces that killed Chairman Fred Hampton Sr. are the same forces that are trying to keep Leonard Peltier locked down right now, and that are oppressing us economically, politically, culturally, everything. So do not let these agents come in the way and overstand. Not everybody can be trusted, but we still can find points of unity and solidarity to colonize, to free them all. I'm Chairman Fred Hampton Jr., the son of Chairman Fred Hampton, who was assassinated by the federal government in December 4, 1969, in Chicago, Illinois. I'm accompanied by my fellow freedom fighter here, Aaron, Who's the cousin of Leonard Peltier? Are y'all familiar with those names? Leonard Peltier, Jeffrey Fred Adams, are you familiar with those names? We've been on a tour. We've been on a tour uh, for quite some time, took us on the case of Leonard Peltier and a whole bunch of other political prisoners, such as Mamiya Abu Jamal, Rasil C.Q. McGee, uh, Say Fool, Nigga. In fact, we say, What's our call? Free them all. So we're going to try that. What's our call? Free them all. What's our call? Free them all. Right we on. might not be back. I might be in jail. I might be anywhere. But when I leave, you can remember I said with the last words on my lips that I am a revolutionary. And you're going to have to keep on saying that. Free Leonard Peltier right now. KPFK Radio 90.7 FM throughout all, all of Southern California. We're here in studio with special guests. There's a great hip-hop album out for a great cause. Free Leonard Peltier, hip-hop's contribution to the Freedom Campaign. It's a nice compilation album. And in studio we have Aaron, Chairman Fred Hampton Jr., and Ariana here to speak on the album. First of all, thank you all for coming through. I know it's a busy schedule. You guys have a lot of plans this weekend to um, record for the documentary, to record interviews. But can you break it down real quick, each of you, on how, what the album is to you guys? I mean, I've listened to the album. I've been familiar with Leonard Peltier's struggle, being a political prisoner, and have read a, a book or two. But this album looks like a really good 
you know, idea of bringing hip hop, the information, the fundraising, the awareness raising. But can you guys put um, some of your words on what the hip hop, I mean, excuse me, what this album is to you? I'm a family member of Leonard Peltier. He's uh, my first cousin. Okay. And I already saw the whole project and pretty much basically wanted to come with a way to raise awareness in the community about Leonard's false imprisonment and to do it in a way that they can relate to. So, you know, I made a calling dog, tons of community activists and artists um, all around the world. And the ones that were really, uh, you know, dedicated to what they do and um, understand the case of Leonard Peltier um, came, came and uh, gathered in them to raise awareness. And it's a benefit album that's going to be, uh, you know, that's on iTunes and is out there for right now for people to pick out. Nice, nice. So if people go on iTunes specifically, what would they look up? It's free Leonard Peltier? Yes. And that'll come in. Uh, put a hip hop's contribution yeah. after that and then we'll be able to pull that out. Cool. And do you want to speak on that, Chairman Fred Hampton Jr.? Right on, let me say uh, first and foremost, revolutionary appreciation. So I'll give us the opportunity to uh, update you on this, uh, this tactic that we implement, uh, as well as the, uh, the listeners and the people in general. Our chair organization called the POCC, known in many arenas as the Path of Cubs, or the acronym stands for the Prisons of Conscious Committee. And um, organize it, and we, we, we do a, n a number of different issues, right? from police terrorism to uh, we don't care health care, that's what goes on in the uh, black and blue of, of oppressed colonized and colonized communities. And also the question of, um, surrounding political prisoners. Uh, I myself am a former political prisoner. I served a little bit under nine years in just about every concentration camp in the state of Illinois. And notice I refer to them as prisons or rehabilitative centers. We refer to them for what they are, that being concentration camps. And, and I was uh, honored and uh, humbled to have my name mentioned, uh, mentioned amongst the likes of that for Linda Peltier, me, Abu Jamal, Sekou uh, Dinga, Sunny Ali Kohli, Michelle Security, and this goes on, and, people in, and the people in general. Uh, I came out of those concentration camps with a uh, more intense commitment. In other words, uh, I came out of there, I was not uh, broken. In fact, as uh, Field Marshal George Jackson, the Black Panther Party, said that he refused to be counted amongst the broken men. I didn't, I didn't come out of there quote unquote rehabilitated because I know the real deal is, uh, the definition of rehabilitation really is uh, to break the uh, spirit of men, women, and children, similar to uh, uh, with the native community. You know, uh, they, when they say they want to civilize them, that really meant you know, saying, uh, to, 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 to break you. So uh, I refuse to be counted amongst that, you know what I'm saying? And I, and I came out of a more intense commitment to reach back for the, uh, the, the people who were encountered, you know what I'm saying? And I did a definitely stand some of those ranks. I was honored, you know what I'm saying, uh, we reached out to uh, as well as a uh, representative of the POCC to help bring more, you know, some more attention to this case. You know, the stakes are high, uh, and they're becoming more and more higher. In other words, you know what I'm saying, we were very clear that we don't, we don't, we don't sit back and we, uh, we, uh, excuse me, we don't stand up and uh, continue to put the word out. We clear with plans, the system has them for us, for us such an NFL tier. This is a case that uh, the uh, demand for clemency and pardon has brought on a number of different cases. In fact, uh, former U.S. President Bill Clinton didn't even uh, give a response to the case, you know what I'm saying? They, 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 uh, they, they attempted to keep it silent, and our job is to uh, turn the lights on, expose these contradictions, and we're going to use every tool, uh, right in the streets, to use these, these, these different phenomena such as hip hop. So, so yeah, that, that's basically, that, that's it in a nutshell, but yeah, the jail cell. Yeah, yeah, right. And Ariana, yourself, you know, um, what's your outtake on the album or your involvement in, in the whole um, history of what Leonard Peltier is going through? Well, uh, Aaron reached out to me um, in the inception of the album and, and uh, you know, asked if I'd be interested in participating. And it was just hands down, yes. Um, it, his story speaks really strongly to me, and um, I, I think that it's so important, it's so wonderful that all these artists came together and just donated their, their time and their heart for this project. Um, it was just such an absolute honor to be able to share that energy in this project, and I feel like it's, it's time for there to be more attention. Put to his case, so um, so it just it, it feels like a, a complete yes. 
go, uh, you know. Let's do it. Yeah. Yeah. That's nice. And the album includes artists such as Tumex, Raka, Tumex being of visionaries, Rock of dilated peoples, Picasso of living legends, M1 of dead prez, Immortal Technique, Sky Zoo, Talib Kweli. That's just to name a few. That's the artist I know off the top of my head. So again, you can get that album, Free Leonard Peltier, Hip Hop's contribution to the Freedom Campaign on iTunes. You can look it up, Google that. And was this something that was planned specifically as a hip hop album or was it something you thought of creating a just a music album in general and then we'll see what kind of genre or we'll see what kind of bands or artists will be involved or was it from the get-go from the foundation realized that i think we want to hit the hip hop artists we want to hit the hip hop market or you know those listeners yeah well it basically started with uh combining two passions and that's uh you know, my love for hip hop, my love for my cousin Leonard, and combining those two, and then knowing the way in hip hop you're able to, there's so much information being able to be, um, you know, listened to by an artist. It's just that uh, sometimes the information that a lot of the artists in the industry put out is really that negative and is, you know, um, retroactive, you know. So we're, we want to be, you know, do something progressive. So. Doing combining the, the message of Leonard Peltier and hip hop, you know, it just uh, sounded like it would really make sense, and I didn't really see anyone out there to. I was waiting for. I thought always in the back of my head, it was really something I always wanted to see happen, and I just didn't see anyone else step up. So I just decided to take it upon myself to do that, and uh, I was just, you know, once I started getting feedback and getting support from the artists, it just made it a little bit easier each time to reach out to other artists and to uh, keep going forward and. And it took about four years, but you know it was well worth it, and um, it's you know it was such an honor to do this project. All right, so it was a That's four right. year process. That's right. Mm -hmm. Four years all together to create this album, which again features a lot of different artists. You know, it's produced well, so that's that's a lot of hard work, and you know my you know respect to that, and especially for Leonard Peltier, especially for a good cause. And all right, on thank you. Welcome, you're welcome. And Chairman, do you work with a lot of hip hop artists, you know, in your line of work, whether it be community organizing um, and just, I guess, events, speaking events? Is it often hip hop related? We use um, uh, unlimited, you know, so a lot of tactics as well, so those apparatuses. And, um, we like one of our, our favorite quotes uh, by the visionary, Minister U.P. Newton. You said that uh, power, power is the ability to, to define phenomena and make it act in a desired manner. Again, power is the ability to, to define phenomena and make it act in a desired manner. So we approach uh, hip hop and any other phenomena in, this, uh, in the spirit that, uh, for example, Geronimo, the native community, how he put his ear to the, his ear to the ground and seeing that what was referred to as a ghost dance was phenomenal and used that as, uh, as, a, as a tool for uh, liberation. Uh, we took examples of Harriet uh, Tubman using the Negro spirits, Reverend Nat Turner using the Negro church. And so, so uh, to fast forward to the day, in this stage in the game, we see, we see it as a tool that can, that can be utilized. And we do understand that uh, the, root, the, the system, the government, what they wanted to do is to flip the script to uh, incorrectly define the phenomenon, whether it be hip hop, street organizations, or whatever the case may be, and to make it work in the disinterest of the people. So. Again, I, you know, uh, we try to we we we, we, um, we have with the POCC we have a tactic known as the uh, code the code of culture the code of culture where we hold people to a concrete commitment because other than that a lot of times people just have to be abstract on what they mean we already did a good song we understand we we put in concrete tangible terms and we understand that there's a war a literal war being waged on the people and, and everyone must must play a role some uh, case examples how we implement the uh, code of culture is. Um, so, uh, so, uh, the Dave Chappelle Block Party, when we see the, see the time, see the stage, he came out there and put out different cases of uh, uh, cases of uh, Marshall Conway, say cool things, and so on and so forth. Uh, Kanye West, the statement he made about George Bush in reference to his, to his position to uh, the people in New, New Orleans in response to Hurricane America. And those really call it Hurricane Katrina. But that we, we, we say, we say, PLCC said that Katrina ain't killed nobody, but America did. When, when Kanye West said the statement about George Bush, not like black people, that was. 
that was a result of a, of a sit down we had with Kanye West eight hours prior to that. And we're not saying it to, to be like, you know, the, uh, bragging, but we're saying that the, the, the people can put in the correct context that movements make things happen. The dog wag the tail, the tail don't wag the dog. Miss Clint, y'all, we here live and direct with my man of all the technique, y'all know how we do this, man. We say, what's the call? Free them all. If we took me here today, put in the case of man, too long ahead of the prison, little pair of tear. I know I'm talking too fast, now y'all listen too slow. Man, real quick, man, we be showing some of the daddy, now I'm here with the motor technique right here, man. So we pull some of the daddy, shop in the pair of tear. First and foremost, shout out to all the elders, all the political prisoners, free them all, that's how we say it. I feel that we're living on occupied land right now. We continuous to keep hearing about illegal immigrants and this screaming at, at individuals who have lived here for thousands of years. We keep seeing Native American, African people being the victims of shameless and disgusting crimes by the state. We keep hearing about it being swept under the rug. And as a community, I think we're all tired of that. As a community, I think we all know that there's an innocent man in prison and that the federal government specifically targets movements that expose the hypocrisy and the manner in which they take advantage of the public. You know, nowadays they want to pit uh, uh, pri private sector against working class. They got people saying, oh, these teachers are the problems, when it's really corporations that have drained the system completely dry. They're trying to cut people's collective bargaining all over the world. They're trying to make it seem like they're humanitarian for offering people life in jail instead of killing them for a crime that they never commit. You're not a humanitarian unless you give the motherfucker back 20 odd years of his life. You know, 30 odd years of his life. Free Mumia, free Leonard Peltier, we're still in the struggle. Mortal technique. We out of here. We still rolling, we still rumbling, y'all. You know what I'm saying? Non stop, man. The beat goes on, middle. You know what I'm saying? We say we ain't just singing it, we bringing it, man. Let them know what it is, what it is, what it do. This is our care. I'm representing here with Jimmy Frampton Jr., UNCC. You know what I'm saying? People like me, Abu Jamal, Leonard Pelletier, and all the other political prisoners out there in the world. I stand in solidarity with everybody who's about justice, freedom, and equality. You know what I mean? Right now, you're seeing a lot of things changing. People getting nervous about 2012, but we've been living. We've been living in battle zones, we've been living in the war zones for years and years, and our people have been resilient. And every time that you see us come up and try to build a structure inside, you've been trying to demonize it. Now you realize that you're entering the Indian rope. You're putting out these calls for people to respond to you. Well, I need you to understand right now that these people that are around me right now, we're making things work because we're not depending on you. And that's what revolution is about. You know what I'm saying? So, listen, to everybody out there, please, 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 communicate. Never ever before, now is the time to communicate. And we need to stand in solidarity with each other about love more than anything. My name is Akir. I'm out of here. Peace and respect. Free them all. You free them all. Free Leonard Peltier right now. Free all political prisoners. The United States government must share in the responsibility for the June 26th firefight. It appeared that the FBI was equally to blame for the shootout, said Judge Gerald Haney, senior judge in the Eighth Circuit Court of Appeals, in a letter supporting clemency for Leonard Peltier. The government spent nearly a billion dollars in the military operation on Pine Ridge. And that's a billion 1975 or 1973 dollars. That's probably more than all the money invested in social programs on that reservation from 1870 onward. A people's movement to control the resources and land on the reservations happened to coincide with uh, the energy crisis in the, in the Black Hills, there were at least a dozen large multinational corporations, energy corporations involved. And the government purports to represent the people, but it really represents vested economic interests. The movements that are working for positive social change threaten the interests of uh, the transnational corporations. This weekend also marked another occasion, the 66th birthday of Native American activist Leonard Peltier. But once again, his birthday came and went without candles and a cake. That's because he's still locked up three decades later. So did he commit murder or was he framed by the FBI? Artis Sheehan Hafiz has more. He's a sensitive topic for the FBI. The imprisonment of this Native American man has led a movement that transcends beyond U.S. borders and illustrates a gaping wound still bleeding injustice for America's indigenous population. It's a far cry from justice for Leonard Peltier, 
The six-time Nobel Peace Prize nominee spent his 66th birthday in prison, marking over three decades since he was convicted of a crime many argue he did not commit. They had no evidence at all that he, that he killed anybody. Um, and that's in the court records. Oh, hey, 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 hey. It all began here on the Pine Ridge Indian Reservation in South Dakota. The FBI's covert war against the militant American Indian movement culminated in the deaths of two FBI agents and a native member of AIM. Although two AIM members were acquitted of the shootings on evidence of self-defense, Peltier was extradited back to the U.S. from Canada. The FBI's lead witnesses in the case later recanted their statements, which the FBI used as faulty affidavits and coerced testimonies against Peltier. Regardless of the questionable evidence, Peltier was convicted of two life terms in prison. He has been labeled by foreign heads of state, U.S. lawmakers, Hollywood movie moguls, and members of the European Parliament as a political prisoner of the United States. And Jihan's in the studio to talk with me more about this story. So Jihan, you mentioned in your story that the FBI is kind of waging a covert war against uh, Native Americans. Can you elaborate a little bit on that? Sure. Well, we know of the Pentagon Papers and the WikiLeaks Papers, but we don't know too much about the COINTEL Papers. Now, COINTEL Pro stands for Counterintelligence Program. It was an initiative launched by the FBI in the early 1960s, 1970s against political sentiment in this country political dissent. The Native American movement, the American Indian movement, was very much a part of that. They were advocating for indigenous rights, for empowerment, and that, of course, meant bad things for the FBI. In fact, it got so serious that the, Native, the American Indian movement led an armed struggle against the American government that was on air for about three months. And, of course, this did not sit well for the FBI. And uh, culminating in that, there were back about 66 deaths of AIM members. Uh, American Indian movement members were killed. And the FBI did not investigate their killings, but of course there was a shootout and Peltier was indicted in that case. Uh, till this day, the FBI does not have any actual witnesses that say that Peltier was there at the time of the murder, but for the most part, the COINTELPRO was full intimidation against any kind of radical movement in this country, including AIM. And so what's the status on things right now? Why should Native Americans today care about this story? Um, is the American Indian movement still in existence? Yes, partially in existence. I mean, Lanaric Pelty is a very personal thing. For the American Indians, uh, for anyone that knows Native American history, in the early in 1900s, the Americans, uh, the American government had an assimilation program where they took Native American children to boarding schools, took away their language, converted them to Christianity, and gave them different names. Then they had a relocation program where they brought them to the cities, and they were lost in that era. Yesterday evening, if you were like me, you may have caught a rather interesting collision of worlds on television. John Stewart, America's most trusted newsman, appeared on Bill O'Reilly's show to debate one of the country's most pressing issues. Now, it wasn't the economy or the wars or the future of this country. No, the hot topic of that evening was a rapper's appearance at a White House poetry slam. It went a little something like this. You know, we thought inviting a rapper named Common to a poetry reading at the White House was a big mistake by the administration. That's because Common has openly sympathized with two convicted cop killers. But our pal John Stewart disagrees with the criticism of Common. So I challenged him last week to a debate, and he answered the call. All right, Stewart, I'm shocked. <laughs> I am shocked that shocked? You, you don't understand why people like me and millions of other Americans right. are ups upset, annoyed, and uh, looking for answers that a guy like right. Common Mm -hmm. would be entertained at the White House. Now who's pettifogging? Now okay. I can't even well, see you. I can't, hear your pettifog. No, that is exactly the same. Okay. Bob Dylan wrote a song yeah. about a convicted killer named Hurricane Carter. He's been to the White House. Why are you drawing the line at common? There is a selective outrage machine here at Fox that pettifogs only when it suits the narrative that suits them. Okay, it was entertaining. There were some good points raised, despite the fact that the whole thing was clearly orchestrated for entertainment purposes and ratings. Uh, but then the discussion took a rather interesting turn. Take a look. This guy is controversial all day long with this stuff. Not only did he support this cop killer or celebrate the cop killer, he celebrated another one in Philadelphia. Again, he's celebrating someone he thinks was unjustly. He's not celebrating. Is this Perry is... Nason we're talking about now? Is this the most brilliant lawyer of all time? Who? This oh, 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 come on. Well, let me ask you a question. On. Are you familiar with, with Leonard Peltier? Yes. Okay. 
Leonard Peltier was convicted of killing yeah. two. All FBI right, now we're agents. going out to wounded knee. It's okay. similar. Uh huh. All right. No, it's not. You're, you're, well, why you're is petty, it not? Because you're petty fogging the issue. It's the exact same thing. It's a guy convicted of killing a law enforcement official. Now, guess who wrote a song about Leonard Peltier? Yeah. Bono. Okay. Guess where he was? The White House. Booyah! All right. That's a rap word. Leonard Peltier, Lumia Bujamal. Names and faces that you might be familiar with if you watch this network. In the stacks of pardon applications were those of prisoners like Native American activist Leonard Peltier. It's shameful the way that U.S. government is letting this happen to Leonard. Peltier was sentenced to two life terms in prison for allegedly killing two FBI agents. But the initial trial was corrupted. Some argue Peltier's only crime was his political activism. They had no evidence at all that he, that he killed anybody. Mumia Abu-Jamal was a member of the Black Liberation Movement. He, too, was charged for a crime world dignitaries and members of the European Parliament insist he did not commit. The reason why he's in jail now is because he was framed. Some argue these convictions are simply the most known cases of a systematic attempt to silence those seen as a threat to the establishment. Now, it struck me as a little strange that John Stewart and Bill O'Reilly, some would say the ideological figureheads of the mainstream left and right, were chatting about Leonard Peltier and Mumia Abu-Jamal, as if these cases were as well known as, say, I don't know, Lindsay Lohan's latest drug problems. They say he's a radical, he don't fit the game A heart full of glory and a fist of pain A couple of battle scars but shit's the same Are you not entertained? Leonard Peltier, hip-hop's contribution to the Freedom Campaign And speaking on political prisoners I know you said um, you were locked up for, for years you know, And we have listeners who tune in frequently to the station in general, KPFK, who are locked up We've gotten handwritten letters and emails and whatnot, but it, it's something they look forward to, especially being locked up. There ain't much to look forward to, I'd imagine. So are there any words of wisdom, experience, advice that you all would want to share with some of the people locked up right now? Definitely, um, um, I, I stay, stay a clenched fist on self for those who are held captive. Um, the organization that I chair is the uh, Prisoners of Conscience Committee. It is not a prison activist organization, it is a revolutionary organization. However, in the same breath, we recognize that prison is one of the major tentacles of the attacks that's being waged on, uh, on, 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 on uh, oppressed communities. And we very clear that there is no war on drugs, there's no war on guns, there's no war on gangs, there's a war on the community. We also are very clear, as the Minister UEP Newton said, that if we don't fight back, if we don't resist, it can be considered nothing less than reactionary suicide. And um, only you know, again, many, many of those forces, uh, whether they be in Folsom, whether they be in Idaho, whether they be in Cook County Jails in Chicago, or, uh, or the juvenile detention centers, they've heard uh, the commitment. I want to reinforce to restate that commitment that we will never forget and never forgive. You know, saying that, uh, uh, the system, you know, saying that it has and continues to kidnap, uh, kidnap uh, the people under such uh, guises or fronts as a. Uh, uh, civilized the natives, uh, slavery, uh, sharecropping, uh, war on gangs, war on guns, war on terror, you, know, you name it. We remain very clear that there's war on the people. And we say that whatever differences, we say what the Black Panther Party said, that whatever differences amongst the people are reconcilable. Our differences between the people and the state are irreconcilable. In other words, we know that there are issues that, we know that happen in the community, you know what I'm saying, we've been abused for real, so on and so forth. We deal with those contradictions. We would never forgive a system that you know, has committed genocide on the black and brown and red communities. We never forgive a system that, 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 as we speak, you know what I'm saying, in uh, uh, dropping bombs throughout North Africa and throughout the world. You dig? So, um, though, uh, we, we, we talk about gangsters and criminals, we, tell, we, 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 we also stress to those who are held captive and to the people in general. Uh, let's be very clear who the real criminals are. Tell forces don't flatter yourselves. We know who the American gangsters are. You know what I'm saying? They're the Frank Rizzo's. The, the, uh, Philadelphia, uh, uh, Richard Davis of Chicago, George W. Bush, and so on and so forth, as well as, as, well, as, as, well as uh, uh, the, uh, the Obama's and the rest of the people that are uh, in the White House now. You know, so these are the uh, megalomaniacs, you know what I'm saying, you know, so who are implementing you know, so real crimes against, you know what I'm saying, people domestically and internationally. So uh, to, to, to those who are here at Capitol, we say, what's our call? Free them all. And we, uh, and we say, 
well with the people of Sword of Mount. In other words, you heard the U.S. Marines, they say their thing was kill them all, they God sort them out. POCC says free them all with the people of Sword of Mount. Word up. Free them all. That's free them all. And free definitely free them, all. free them all. Everybody tuning in who may be locked up, keep your head up and, you know, big appreciation for tuning in. Um, this show, you know, it's kind of for y'all right now. And in the near future, you know, with each of you, once again, we're speaking with Aaron, Chairman Fred Hampton Jr. and Ariana. You know, what's in the near future for each of y'all? I know you mentioned there's a volume two that you're working on. We're gonna get started working on, right? Slowly, you know, put together something and make sure that, uh, you know, we're really uh, being able to bring the information to the people and make sure, you know, it's a quality project. So, yeah, it's in the works. Um, you know, uh, as far as the artists, um, you know, they're still up in the air as who's going to be on there, but a lot of the artists from the first album will definitely be back. Okay. They've done all of them, you know. It's really, uh, really appreciate everyone's support, and I'm a fan of everyone's music who's on the album, and, you know, it's such an honor just to be able to do this, and, you know, it's just a dream come true. And I know uh, Leonard recently wrote me a letter uh, thanked, uh, to me and the artist, thanking everybody, and had some strategy as far as, like, how to implement the album and to get the word out about it. So, uh, you know, just to know that it reached Leonard, and uh, even though he's not able to listen to it locked up, you know, uh, it really meant a lot to him, and, um, you know, that right there was in itself worth doing, so. Yeah, and first, Volume 1, the album we're talking about right now, that came out in, what, 2010? 2010, on uh, Thanksgiving. Okay, yeah. so it's fairly new. And once again, free Leonard Peltier, hip-hop's contribution to the Freedom Campaign is the album we're speaking on. Where can people get a hold of you guys, whether it be online or... Uh, well, by, if you visit uh, freeleonardalbum.com, uh, that's a website that it's uh, under construction right now, but uh, pretty much that will be the place to find out about Volume 2 and uh, reach out to me. freeleonardalbum.com. freeleonardalbum.com. Right now, it'll take you straight to, uh, to purchase it online, so that's how you can get straight to it. And, but eventually it'll be updated with, uh, you know, but mainly please visit uh, who, www.whoisleonardpeltier.info and you can buy the album off the website and uh, that's the website set up for Leonard Peltier's Defense Offense Committee, which is based out of North Dakota and that's how you get all the latest updates on the case and there also is a ton of information on there where you can educate yourself as well. So. Please visit that website if you get a chance. Yo, what's up? This is Trill OG and for UGK for life, man. We support all of us in the business, man. It's a good time, man. You got free me, man. Heads up out there. Man. Just like Matulu Shakur, just like Mumi Abu Kamal, Leonard Peltier. Free Mumi Free Leonard Peltier. Free Matulu Shakur. Free them all. We don't know who shot those agents. Prosecutor Lynn Crooks in a Court of Appeals, November 9, 1992. Leonard Peltier was targeted for neutralization by the FBI years before the firefight. In 1972, two off-duty Milwaukee police officers beat Peltier and then had him charged with attempted murder. This occurred after one of the offers had shown a picture of Peltier to his girlfriend and boasted of catching the big one for the FBI. U.S. Court for the District Court of North Dakota, November 1990. Both incidents were entirely consistent with the FBI's Cointel program, which targeted any individuals or groups with political voices. Again, the album is Free Leonard Peltier, Hip Hop's contribution to the Freedom Campaign. You can buy that on iTunes and Amazon, and definitely check out the websites. Get familiar with the struggle and, you know, play your part in the community. I want to thank each of you once again for coming in. That's Aaron, Chairman Fred Hampton Jr., and Ariana. And not just for coming in and being on the radio show, but for your contribution to this album your continuing contribution to community work and action and activism and keeping it positive for the seeds, for the youth, because I think that's important too. You gotta reach them, or even more specifically, our children, and let them continue the struggle and continue the fight. So 
So definitely you have our support here and I'm sure all the entire station of KPFK. So when the new album comes out, definitely we'll love to check it and play more songs, get the information out and anything you guys got going on. So thank you once again for coming through. And we're out here to show our solidarity for all political prisoners, mainly Leonard Peltier, an innocent man who's been locked up for the last 34 years. We're demanding justice right now for Leonard Peltier. Free Leonard Peltier right now. The only call we say free a mom, keep the, keep the name, keep the minds, the, the names of Rochelle Sakuma, keep me up with you all in the Peltier. They don't say I'll be the people in general. I'm you got New Orleans again. So what's the call for your mouth? Chairman Fred come to you live and direct. Mr. Five, listen, we going coast to coast and then fight beyond that. When the call out loud and clear, what's the call for your mall? Gotta definitely free them all, baby. Believe that. And all you artists out there, start utilizing your voices to raise the awareness of what's going on and the injustices, not only in your city, but all across the world. Because our voices mean a lot, and we're a lot of inspiration to a lot of people. If we continue to use our voices artfully, then we can change a lot of things. Society is about what do you implement to change the culture in the days that you live in. As artists, we have that power. Utilize it. Say something worthy of listening. Real talk. It's a bad open my man. He put y'all know we do this here. I beat him on the pool table before. That's another story, though. No, you didn't. You got whooped on. <laughs> you got whooped on. Trust that. Man. Hey, we've been in San Quentin before. We've been, we've been backstage before, man. Brother, always so love this beggar. Get clean. This new tour, man. We say, what's our call? Free them all, man. That's what it is, man. Yeah, I performed in San Quentin. You understand me? Gave a live performance up at that time. You understand? It was groovy like a drive-in movie. Then, a few weeks later, whoop on this man and, 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 and some food. I'll tell you, y'all, man. Next <laughs> I had that camera. I'm gonna be on the pool table again, man. There's too much green out there for us. But we have to pay dues, man, right now. You understand? Man, I'm finna show up and show out. Much love. Much love. No respect, man. What's up, call? Here's up, eyes open the fist clinch. Y'all know how we do this, man. It's the chairman, Fred, come to you again, live and direct. Let our brother just shout at y'all. Y'all know who this is. Y'all know what it is. So if y'all don't know, my name is Raz Kaz, man. And right about now, what we really want to say is free. When me, I'll be free tomorrow. Yes, indeed. Free the Midland the Petit. We free Rochelle Secu McGee. Man, free to move now. We say free C numbers Illinois. In fact, we say, man, make it plain and simple, man. What's the call? Free them all. Now it's free. Free them all. Right on. That's the My love, salute. Yo, that's right. Sick Jack, homie. What's the call? Free them all, baby. Side the for life, man. Repping all the people that are just misrepresented out there and done wrong, homie. You know what I'm saying? Free them all. Love, EV, evidence, dominated people. Showing my love and support. You know what I'm saying? Everyone knows the cause and knows what the right thing is. We're going to push forward and make that happen. Love. What's the call? Free them all. What's the call? Free them all. all. Classic. Green Day, California. The no more road high in the crowd in the metropolis. Shining like who on top of this? People was tussling and arguing about the day. This ain't the time of the usual one to shoot a bow. Tonight a lives are described and screwed up all. The end is beautiful. We know y'all can all got it. Think the matter like fiber optics. We're missing them is getting paid to trade a hot stop just for profit. Who thinks I'm an L shape pockets? On the ocean of the second hands and working class watches. Scott's good for the losses. Who's the living? The process. Stay alive, you play a die, no option. Who back there to rob it? Get to the pretty cops and the robbers. Who partners? All heartless. With no conscience. Black streets stay dark. The unbeliever hearts stay hardened. But he will turn the street shopping. City lights stay popping. You make a way of stay solving. The city apples go for sweet. You choose to eat. You can lose your teeth. Many crews will cheat. Many dudes will peep. Who got shot down and locked down. Spot like the savage. Yeah, that average. But it's also explain its existence. I wish the whole world had to jump in. Too afraid. Too much on my mind. I just can't reply. That's the holes in the night to shoot that sunshine. Breathe in, bright stars to shine. Breathe in, smoke from trace to sky. Breathe in, should make it cool. I can't take a chill. I can feel the city breathing. Trust me, man. I guess the flesh should be eaten. Yeah. Now, we're in a deep city rush Sitting on shitty steps, it's too good to roll Cut froze, it's like the city slept We step through concrete jungles, communicating with one another And get a word to warn us all From the hydrants to the gutter, we're the beats What the beats, what the beats we be making You on the one side of the track, looking visibly shaking Taking his punches, punching the depth Taking by the numbers, climbing the plow Pressure, 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 pressure Chosen by others, so baby, I'm not the fucking Play against each other like puppets Swearing you got pulled, the only pull you got is a war Over your eyes we can knowledge in jail like a flesh in the sky. We 
in the sky for God. But you see the size of small. The dream flying away in the way of the extreme. Trust the people born in the air. Please see you can get murdered over a glare. But everything is fair. Paradox and more reality. So keeping a real will make you a casualty of abnormal normality. Will it pour naturally right? Now you wanna wait to get you kept like an alien satellite. Well, ladies, ladies, please see where you at. Yeah, yeah. investigation teletype dated October 2nd, 1975, indicating that FBI ballistics expert Evan Hodge had performed a firing pin test on the Wichita AR-15 claimed by the government to have been Leonard Peltier's, immediately after he received it and compared it to the cartridges found at the scene. Contrary to his trial testimony that the test was inconclusive, this memo conclusively stated that the rifle contained a different firing pin from the weapon used at the firefight. This evidence was withheld from the defense and only discovered years after the trial with the release of the documents via the Freedom of Information Act. Man, we just get out here, man, put out this case, you know what I'm saying? State to state, coast to coast, you know what I'm saying? From the press and the street for the cases, you know, the New York Cartier, Sunday Island, and again, the people in general, you know, stay consistent with it, you know? Tied in every phenomenon, whether it be streets, hip hop, poetry, you name it, you know what I'm saying? The sky's the limit, you know, that's about it. You got to run early, the stakes is high, you know what I'm saying? It's an old saying they get inside them camps. Now, a lot of people call it penitentiary, we call them the concentration camps. Ain't no guaranteed outdate, you know what I'm saying? So, a lot of people just be dying. Hey, well, man, it's a cliche term, we be saying free, you know what I'm saying? Free, uh, free my meal, free within the Peltier, or free, uh, say, cool thing or something. No, it's real, it's real, it's real deal action. You know, uh, they, they, they subjected some tangible, concrete attacks, and then we had some concrete, tangible, you know, some different. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Yeah. yeah, with Leonard Peltier, you know, with this case, we got to just make the uh, facts about the case just, just, just uh, you know, common knowledge amongst the people so that when we organize and we really give the word out here for Leonard, you know, we have, we have our facts and we have the, you know, the core arguments together so that, 
each one of us can carry the message as you know best as possible to reach other people. You know, with uh, 19 constitutional violations in Leonard's case, you know, it was just clearly indicated he didn't get a fair trial. So that's just something everyone you know could understand real easy. So you know, just keeping it keeping it out there. You know, and. Uh, Raising awareness anyway, you know. Definitely. You know, with rallies, marches, just keeping keeping the word alive for Leonard Peltier because his health isn't doing too well. He may have prostate cancer right now, so just uh, banding together, you know, and staying strong. We got to do that for Leonard because uh, he really needs it right now. And uh, you know, free Leonard Peltier right now. Definitely. I mean, I, I would always rather do a benefit than a memorial. You know what I mean? So, yeah, I mean, sure. right now, while the brother is right is here, we need to make sure he gets his as much light on this case as possible. I mean, it's a, it's a universal, truth is universal, truth is timeless. And sure. if people really understood that, you know, this is a soldier, regardless of skin color, regardless of cultural background, that's fighting for the for the good of humanity, for the good of man, for everybody to progress forward and for the wickedness and iniquities to be pushed away for all people. I think that other people should break, you know, uh, join in the cause and, and celebrate this mission to right these wrongs. It's a universal cause, I mean, Regardless of what organization you, you you associate yourself with at any time, Cointel Pro was on you. You know what I mean? The people with the same light, the same microscope, the same sniper was it was aimed right at you. And they looked at us all as the same way anyway, so we might as well look at each other as the same and come together for and, and right this wrong and fight this cause, man. Freeland or Peltier Freeland or Peltier. And not only Freeland or Peltier, but let's bring light to the wickedness that caused the situation in the first place, man. No doubt, for Leonard Peltier. I want to comment on that real quick, just, you know, as Will said, what you just pointed out, you rather do a benefit than a memorial, because a lot of times people wait to become a, um, let's say, like a safe issue to talk right. about, you know what I'm saying, after, you know, after the course of long, after they're dead or something. Right. You talk about some sort of nostalgia, abstract type of shit, you know. Exactly. That, 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 that's a key point, you know what I'm saying, you, know, you get a season time right now, people can't, we can't afford the luxury for people to wait to become quote unquote safe to talk about saying, well, man, exactly. yeah, I knew them since I was uh, uh, I want to talk about it now, man. You know, we very clear. They, you know, they, they get the telescope on them right now. Yeah. And, and, and in reality, they get all of us on death row one way or another. You know, exactly. And they kill us one way or another. You know, exactly. You know, so let's put a campaign out there, the case out there. Keep heat on the streets. You know, let's keep it hot. You say, man, free pair of tear facts. Who's our call? Free them all. I mean, we already together anyway, man, because they already put the people that are awake in one little pile anyway, and they don't want us waking the rest of the people up anyway. They want our, you know, they want us to keep hitting the snooze button, if anything, man. So we gotta, we gotta do what we gotta do right now. Like the brothers were just saying, man, free Lena Peltier, free all political prisoners, all people fighting the righteous cause for the benefit of all of us. They already have us grouped together anyway. It's a problem, but we actually, that, that group that we in is really the solution, man. We gotta come together and make this right. That's what it is. No doubt, we gotta, you know, the time is right now to free Leonard Peltier. We have to build a, on a solid foundation, build a structure, and that starts with the education. You know, reading the books like In the Spirit of Crazy Horse by Peter Mathiasen, uh, Prison Writings by Leonard Peltier, uh, Agents of Repression, and just staying informed, signing up for the email updates. You know, if you, you know, seeing us out here, we're out here, you know, to really make a message uh, to the public and make a statement that Leonard Peltier is an innocent man and he needs to be released right now. So please join with us and educate yourself and please stay out there and stick this one out for Leonard. You know, it's not over yet. You know, the people have the power. So, you know, let's really utilize it and free Leonard Peltier right now. We want to make sure we keep these cases of political prisons fresh in our heart. All sorts of pressing cases going down, international case of Troy Davis. Y'all hear anybody about Troy Davis? They, they talking about executing him September 21st, y'all, to the amount of days. I'm not talking about no, no years from now. It's pressing right now. Type these names in. Google them. You know what I'm saying? See how you can the put the word out. We want the petition to be free Troy Davis, free Lil Punchy, free Linda Peltier, free Rochelle Secure and Back. We say, what's our call? What's our call? Freedom Power to the people, y'all. So I'm tag team. I'm going to pass it to my fellow Freedom Fighters so you can get you know, some updates from the present case of Linda Peltier, who is one of the longest held political prisons in this country, and why the government got him locked up. I'm on that skateboard. I need y'all attention. Hey, excuse me. Hey, excuse me. Excuse me. Pardon us. Hey, my man. All due respect in the words of Tupac. He got a bunker for peace, respect. Give me a few seconds of time. Real talk. We talk, they try to kill Troy Davis. I'm saying, so real talk. Let's see his business, man. Troy Davis. They talk about executing them, too much was good. Take them in, man. Real to see it. We talk people lives in, man. Real talk. Right on. Free them all.
Ordinary circumstances, y'all, I would ask for a moment of silence. But in this situation, y'all, you want a moment of noise. You want the state of Georgia, you want California, you want LA, you want Africa and Attica to hear us real loud and clear with a long live Troy Davis, y'all. Long live Troy Davis. Let me hear real shake the ground of Cook County Jail. Shake the ground of Folsom. Shake the ground of Attica. Long live Troy Davis. Let me hear real loud. Long live Troy Davis. They can't hear you in Cook County Jail, y'all. Let me hear it again. Long live Troy Davis. They can't hear you in Stateville Penitentiary. Let me hear it again. Long live Troy Davis. They can't hear you in Folsom. They can't hear you, man. They can't hear you. They can hear you in Angola, in Africa. Let me hear it again. We're going to go in the corner, get our water, and come on back, keep on swinging for Sunday out of Angola. Keep on swinging for St. Cool Old Digger. Keep on swinging for Mumia Abu Jamal. What's our call? Free of all. What's the goal? Free of all. What's the goal? Free of all. What's the goal? Free of all. Pounds, people, y'all. Do we got love for most of the time? Thank you for joining us on this campaign to raise awareness for Leonard Peltier. Much respect to all the elders and those that have gone on to the spirit world. This project is also dedicated to my cousin Steve Robidoux, the founder of Leonard Peltier's Defense Committee in 1979. Let us leave you with some vital information from Steve during an interview in 1982. Dealing with the third, uh, a fourth victim in which the government had to have a scapegoat because of the, version, the diversionary tactic that they created to discredit our people through the media to get away with the acts of what they're not doing today, and that's exploiting the resources from our land. Mm -hmm. I think many people always ask, well, why did the shootout happen? What was going on? But people just don't know that during that very same time period, Richard Wilson, who was then the acting tribal chairman, was in Washington, D.C., signing away one-eighth of the Pine Ridge Indian Reservation, the Black Hills of South Dakota, which is 133,000 acres of land and valued at billions of do dollars of uranium deposits that are being strip-mined out of there by over 40 corporations today. Because if people wanted to do something, they wanted to retire of being spit on, being discriminated against. They wanted to uh, rise up. A number of us worked closely with them. I personally worked closely with the Black Panthers uh, Party chapters out of Was uh, Seattle, Washington, Port of Oregon. They're the ones that really came out and started uh, showing us how to uh, organize successfully. These were some very intelligent, legitimate, uh, and kind and generous people.